So we are uh, on to quarterfinal number three of the 2025 MIT Integration B. Problem number one in that quarterfinal was uh, the definite integral from x equals to negative pi over 2 to x equals to pi over 2 of the square root of uh, um, second of x minus cos uh, cosine of x. Problem number two was the indefinite integral of uh, x over the cube root of x cubed minus 3x minus 2. And problem number three, the last problem in that quarterfinal set, was the definite integral from x equals to 0 to x equals to 2 pi of the square of the sum uh, from n equals to 0 to n tends to infinity of uh, cosine of 2 to the n uh, x over 2 to the n. So uh, very interesting problems. Uh, let's see how we may be able to solve them. Let's begin by expressing the second of x as 1 over cosine of x, okay? Um, in doing so, uh, my first uh, step, the intuitive step would be to plot out um, this function under the square root sign uh, so that I see what I'm dealing with. So um, let's plot cosine x, right? So it dips to 0 at negative pi over 2 and also 0 at pi over 2. That means that when you're looking at the inverse of that, we're going to have asymptotes at uh, that point so that 1 over cosine of x and the second of x Will look like that. And so when we're now subtracting uh, cosine x from uh, the second of x, uh, we're going to get something like that. So um, the quick thing to see here is uh, we don't really bother to go beyond that is that there is symmetry about x equals to zero. So I would just say that my integral is twice the integral from x equals to zero to x equals to pi over two the square root of 1 over cosine x minus cosine x. In, in doing so, what happens is now I could uh, create a common uh, denominator under the square root sign so that now I have 1 minus cosine squared x uh, over cosine x uh, square root and that is uh, integrated from 0 to pi over 2 and we have uh, we have uh, twice of that. And so um, what that means is that 1 minus cosine squared, cosine squared x is sine squared x over cosine x now. And so uh, the numerator uh, becomes sine x. The denominator becomes uh, the square root of cosine x. Um, the important thing to note here is that sine x is the derivative of the negative of cosine x. And uh, it's quick, I mean, it's very easy to see that we are having uh, the derivative of actually twice the derivative of negative of the square root of cosine x. Because now if we have cosine x to the power half uh, differentiated, we have neg half minus one becomes a negative a half. That's become that, but still you have to differentiate the cosine and the square root sign, and that's what we had in the numerator. But let's not forget about the negative sign. Uh, and so if we pull the four and the negative sign out, we have the derivative uh, of cosine x inside the integral, uh, the integration sign. And that means that if the integration is the antiderivative, so these processes cancel each other. And so we have our um, answer being uh, square root of cosine x. Uh, and obviously the interval or the limits 0 and pi over 2 as shown here substituting that as uh, x tends to pi over 2 cosine pi over 2 minus as x tends to 0 cosine 0 obviously square root here we've forgotten um, but that becomes uh, cosine pi over 2 is 0 uh, cosine 0 is 1 square root of 1 is 1 and so negative 1 times negative 4 becomes 4. And that is the answer that was being solved, 4.
So on to problem number two. Uh, the important thing here to note is that we can re-express a numerator uh, in a certain way. But before we do that, let's look at the denominator. And the denominator here under the cube root sign, um, it's easy to factorize this into x plus 1 squared times x minus 2, right? And let's express it in such a way that um, it's easy to visualize what we're dealing with here. So we can now say that this is x plus 1 to the power 2 over 3 in the denominator, uh, x minus 2 to the power 1 over 3. And x using this, uh, what we have in the brackets, can be expressed as twice of x plus 1 plus x minus 2, which becomes um, two, uh, 3x. Now we have to divide the 3, so we've introduced a constant third there. Okay, going forward, um, we can now uh, separate uh, these two parts of the numerator. Um, and so we have 2x plus 1 over x plus 1 to the power 2 over 3 uh, times x minus 2 to the power 3rd plus x over x minus 2 uh, over um x plus 1 to the power 2 over 3 times x minus 2 to the power a third. So this, uh, focusing on x plus 1, they interact, so we have 2 over 3. So we have 2 over 3, x plus 1 to the power a third, dividing x plus 1 by x plus 1 to the power 2 thirds. We get this. So we have 2 thirds x plus 1 over third to the power third over x minus 2 to the power third plus x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 to the power third becomes uh, x minus 2 to the power 2 thirds. So we have 1 over 3, we've pulled it in here, of times x minus 2 to the power 2 third over x plus 1 to the power 2 thirds. Okay, let's continue. Um, so it's easy to see that the denominator here uh, is the derivative of x minus 2 to the power 2 thirds, so that this constant comes here, and then 2 minus 2 over 3 minus 1 becomes negative a third here. And then here we have x minus 2 to the power third times the derivative of x plus 1 to the power third. Now, this is very easy to see that we are dealing with uh, the um, derivative of a product such that we have now the integral of the derivative of a product of x plus 1 to the power third and x minus 2 to the power 2 thirds. Since the integral is an antiderivative, these two processes cancel one another, and so we have x plus 1 to the power of third times x minus 2 to the power 2 thirds plus the integration constant being our answer. Um, so this is a very interesting problem, um, and I'm just going to go through it slowly. Um, it's certainly a very easy problem, but uh, requires some bit of uh, care as you're handling it. Um, so when you spread out uh, whatever is under the integration sign here, uh, you're going to have the square terms and then you're going to have the cross terms, right? Um, so um, the square terms, uh, you'll have a sum from k equals to zero to k tending to infinity of cosine squared of two to the k x over two to the two k. So in other words, two uh, n squared is going to be equal to two n plus 2n uh, uh, plus n, so that you have 2n in the, new, in the power uh, on the exponent here. And then you're going to have cross terms where things multiply each other, and we have to specify that m is not equal to k here. Um, so um, there's going to be interleaving. Um, 
the cross terms um, and when m is not equal to k then it's not a square but when m equals to k and then you get the square terms here right um, and so uh, going forward um, the integration uh, can obviously cross into uh, the summation sign but before that we can express cosine squared as cosine twice of 2kx plus 1 over 2. And similarly, we are going to also express here, and this is easy knowing cosine a plus b equals to cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b cosine a minus b equals cosine a cosine b uh, plus sine a sine b. And when you add that, you have cosine a cosine b being equal to uh, a half of cosine a plus b plus cosine a minus b. And that's what we've done here, right? Um, and so uh, we could pull the half uh, down so that you have twice um, 2 to the power 2k. And again, you could do the same here um, so that you have twice uh, 2 to the power k plus m, right? So doing that, um, you can now go ahead and integrate each term in the summation uh, sign and under the summation sign. And so we have the summation from k equals to 0 to k tending to infinity of 1 over 2 times 2 to the power 2k. And then when you integrate this, you have 1 over uh, 2 times 2 to the power k of sine of 2 times 2 to the power kx plus x, this one here, from 0 to 2 pi. And the same thing here, we have a sine component here. And we have a sine component. And since we see here that uh, these are all integers, the sine of an integer times 2 pi and sine of integer times 0 will all just tend to 0. So the only term that remains is what comes when you substitute the limits to this x here. So that becomes the summation from k equals to 0 to infinity of 1 over 2 times 2 to the power 2k of 2 pi minus 0. And so the 2 here and this 2 here cancel. So we have pi over 2 to the power 2k. We can pull the pi out because it's a constant. And then we have 1 over 2 to the power 2 uh, to the power k. And here we have a geometrical progression of a constant ratio, 2 to the power 2. Um, and we can that sums up to infinity. So the first term obviously uh, is when k equals to zero. So that means that that is uh, one. So the first term is going to be equals to one, and the common ratio is uh, one over four. So we have one minus one over four, um, and that becomes pi times one over one minus a quarter is three quarters. So the reciprocal of 3 quarters is going to be equal to 4 over 3 pi. And that's the answer that was being sought for. Um, so that comes, that brings us to the end of um, today's video. Um, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, we do encourage you to subscribe to our channel. If you haven't liked or uh, if you feel inclined to share, please do share. So until next time, uh, be blessed. And it was really an uh, awesome moment uh, sharing this with you. Bye-bye.